Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs. I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Paragon Active Assurance Basic Tests Learning Bite. All right, so here is our example. In our example, we have our topology on the left. We have two test agents, that is TA1 and TA2. And then those test agents are connected to the control center using Ethernet 0. And then Ethernet 1 is used by the test agents to connect to the service provider network. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, we'll configure a UDP test with a duration of 60 seconds. It's going to be TA1 to TA2 using the ETH1 interface. And it's going to be a full mesh, meaning TA1 will be sending traffic and also receiving traffic. And also TA2 will be sending traffic and receiving traffic. And again, that's going to be on the ETH1 interface. And we'll send 10 megabits per second. So again, TA1 will be sending and receiving 10 megabits per second. Same with TA2. And then the aired seconds threshold are putting down 0% loss. So that means if we lose any traffic, we will have a failed test for that portion of time. And so we'll run that test and then examine the results. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the web interface of Paragon Active Assurance and get this going. All right, so here is the web interface. We're in the dashboard. We can see there's no tests configured. We could click the Create New Test here to get started. Or we can go over to the ribbon, select tests, and then we can select new test sequence. Now we can click list, and that'll give us a list of tests that have been run. There's nothing currently. So we could click the create button or click the create new test link as well. Or we can click the new test sequence link here. And we're presented with the new test sequence workspace. And we need to name this. Let's go ahead and name this something. And here we have our options. On the left, we have the different categories we can select from. And on the right are the different types of tests that are within those categories. And so you can see here we have UDP, TCP, multicast UDP, and so forth. And we want to do a UDP test. So let's go ahead and select UDP. And one thing to point out is notice how this UDP test is a puzzle piece. That means we can add additional parallel tests to it. We could add a TCP test. We could add a DNS test and things like that. If it's just a square piece, then we can only have it as one step that isn't ran in parallel of the other tests. But with this, we're just running a simple UDP test. So we'll just focus on that. All right, so we have the duration. It's set in 60 seconds. That's what we want it at. So that's great. And then fail threshold seconds. So how many error seconds do we need to consider this test failed? We're currently saying zero, so we get any aired seconds, it's going to result in a fail for this test. The test won't be successful. And so we could change that to whatever we want. Remember, we will be putting this at 0% loss. So we have any sort of loss, it's going to result in a fail for the test. And so, okay, great. So wait for ready. We can say, wait one minute, 10 minutes, whatever. We don't wanna do that. Let's just run the test right away. And then recall that we wanted full mesh. Currently the default is client to server, and then we'd select the interface for the server, select the interface for the client, and then select the direction. Down, up, by a directional. We're not doing that. We're gonna do full mesh, and that gets rid of all those other options. And then we're gonna select the interfaces. And here we have a whole bunch of interfaces. We got TA1, TA2, and we also have TA3 and 4 that we're not really using in this learning byte, so we won't worry about those guys. And so let's scroll back up. Now one thing that's really nice is there's a lot of entries here. And what we can do is we can select some filters to narrow down the entries. So with this, let's deselect IPv6. Let's deselect management and get rid of show external IP. That doesn't do anything in our current setup. So we just have IPv4 selected. And so we wanted Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 1 of TA1 and TA2. Now, if we left the show management available, then we'd have Ethernet 0 for both devices. That's the management interfaces. Well, we don't want to be running this test over Ethernet 0. That's the management network. I mean, you can if you want, but in this situation, it's not necessary. So let's go ahead and get rid of that again. And notice that when we selected this, that it put it in the clients list. We don't have to hit enter. We don't have to click save. We can remove it and then it removes it from the clients list. And then we can put it back because we do need it. All right, so number of flows. Didn't talk about this, but we really only need one flow going here. We don't need multiple flows. And then our rate. We said 10. 
megabits per second. And then the port is set to 5,000 by default. You can change that to whatever you want. This can be useful because this can validate which ports are open and which ports are closed. Currently, we're just going to test the default of 5,000. And so we'll know if port 5,000 is open. And then we can specify a client port. That is the UDP port that the client sent will send traffic. And we can just leave that blank. You'll just select a random port if we do that. Okay, so here we have thresholds for aired seconds. This is where we talk about those thresholds. By default, it goes to 0% loss. We can also set some jitter, some delay, and expected DSCP. So if any of those are outside those boundaries, then it's going to fail, right? Because we said at the top, recall, we said fail threshold seconds zero. So any aired seconds, so there's any time where we don't meet our criteria for threshold for aired seconds, the test will come back as a failed test. Okay, then we have thresholds for severely aired seconds. We can set that as well. We have loss, jitter, and delay. We're not gonna worry about that. And then under advanced, we have some additional options. We can set the do not fragment. It is already set by default, so we're not gonna fragment the traffic. Set the frame size. We can set the DACP value we're setting, the VLAN priority, socket send buffer, socket receive buffer, delay start, things like that. But we're just gonna leave that alone for now. I just wanted to point that out so you guys are aware of what is available in the advanced section, as well as the thresholds for severely aired seconds section. So let's go ahead and scroll to the top and we're basically ready. Let's go ahead and click start and see what happens. You can see here it's setting up the tests and now you can see things are happening. You can see our first stream, we see TA1 ETH1 going to TA2 ETH1 and that looks good. And then the reverse is also gonna be true TA1 ETH1 is receiving, you can see the little arrow pointing that it's receiving. Up top, you can see it was pointing towards the right instead of towards the left. And you can see here it's pointing towards the left. So TA1 on ETH1 using IPv4 is acting as the server and it's receiving. And then TA2 ETH1 IPv4 acting as client is sending. So you can see here things look pretty good. And you can see we have a rate of 10 megabits per second. That looks good. That's what we were expecting. 0% loss. That's fantastic. We don't want to be losing any traffic here. So we know port 5000 UDP is open. And then we also have our delay shown here. And in milliseconds, it's shown really low, but you could set that threshold as well. And you can see the test just finished. We can see that uh, up top here, we can click rerun to rerun that test. And if you looked up there before, I didn't point it out, but it showed stop. So we could stop the test in the middle of the test if we want to as well. And then we also have delete. We can create a report or export the results. And I'm going to go ahead and click on an individual stream. And it brings up a graph. And you can see the ES bar, which is aired seconds, is green. That means we didn't have any sort of errors. It would show black if traffic was lost. Now we can select additional. We can select loss percentage. That's just going to be 0%, so nothing really shows up there. We can see the rate. We see this right up here, 10 megabits per second. We can scroll over it as well. You can see it very slightly. That's expected. We can unselect that if we want. And if you notice, we unselected rate because that was set at 10. And now notice how this changed. We're seeing something extra. And if you look here, this is pink. The line is pink. Uh, that is the legend is pink. And it's average delay in milliseconds. And that is there. Well, why didn't we see that before? Well, recall that the rate was set to 10. And so we do that and that pink is down there, but it's really low because it's not even close to 10. And so you can select additional or deselect whatever you want to do. And then we also have a table. And by selecting by default, it doesn't show anything. And you think, oh, what's the problem? Well, by default, it only shows errors. And so we can select show all and it's going to show everything. We can get exact specifics on what was in here and what happened what was lost, things like that. And of course, everything looked good. You can see here the rate, the loss is zero. With tests, this is something to bring up, is test, it has a resolution of one second. Notice how we have 19, 14, 15, then 16, 17, 18. It's once every second, it's going to record the results. And then if you really want to, you could export to CSV as well. So a CSV file. And so the last thing I wanna show is if we click this rerun button, it's not gonna start the test right to begin with it's going to allow you to edit it. So say you set something up and you're like, oh, I forgot, click stop. And then you have the option to click rerun and it allows you to go through and edit it. And you could start the test again with the different options, or you can start the test again with the exact same options that you had before. 
So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure and run a basic test with Paragon Active Assurance. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.